Hey guys, so in this video, we're just going to look at the movements of the muscles one at a time. <clears throat> so we're going to really take our time. I'm going to use my body the best that I can to go through these motions. So if you just want to follow in your book, um, I think we'll start with uh, we'll start with ATC, or at least as far as we've gone to date. So we're going to go from the abdominal wall up through the chest. Uh, I'm not going to include the neck because we're going to do the neck this week. So I'll make an, another video later on those. So this, this way it's a little more digestible. So we'll start with rectus abdominis. And simply put, um, and by the way, we're not gonna go over the compressing the abdominal contents because that's not something that is a physical action necessarily. We can utilize that concept um, in ways that we've talked about or I've talked about in the past, but that's more of a, a function of the muscles, okay? Um, as far as voluntary actions, we're gonna go with spinal flexion, which is just gonna look like this. Okay, so bending the spine forward is spinal flexion. Pretty simple, okay? For the obliques, let's start with external oblique. So external oblique has a, a number of actions that it does. Like rectus abdominis, it will be a spinal flexor. It's also going to be involved in lateral flexion, which is bending the spine to the side, and it will be involved in contralateral rotation. So if we're talking about my right external oblique, will be rotation to the left. And if we're talking about my left external oblique, it's gonna be rotation to the right. For internal oblique, it's very similar. We're going to get spinal flexion, okay? We're going to get lateral flexion, okay? And lateral flexion is to the right or the left, there's one on each side. And then it's same side rotation. So my left internal will rotate me to the left and my right internal will rotate me to my right, okay? And that leads us with transverse abdominis, which really doesn't have any listed voluntary actions. It's just involved with compressing the abdominal contents. Okay, for psoas and iliacus, we can talk about them both together, because really the only voluntary action we need to worry about is hip flexion. Okay, so it, both of those muscles are gonna pull the femur forward into hip flexion. Okay, um, so as we know, it's also involved in that stabilizing function, uh, limiting the posterior drift of the lumbars from the femur. Okay, but that's not really an action that we have to exhibit. Again, it's more of a functional thing that it does. Moving up to the chest, let's start with pec major. Remember, it's our shoulder joint muscle, so it's gonna be moving the humerus, okay? So we're gonna get flexion of the humerus. We're going to get medial rotation. So it's going to fire to rotate the femur, <laughs> the humerus, excuse me, I don't know why I said femur. Um, let me start over in case I said femur the whole time. Um, it's going to engage in flexion of the humerus, so moving the humerus into flexion, which is a forward motion. Okay? It's going to be performing medial rotation of the humerus, so rotating that humerus medial. It's going to be involved in adduction. So if we're in an abducted position, it will draw the arm or humerus back in towards the body. It would even continue it across the body, okay? Adduction, so flexion, medial rotation, and adduction of the humerus. Okay, we also have that shoulder depression piece, but like we said in the video earlier or in lecture that when we depress our shoulders down, like in a dip, pecs will be involved. But a lot of that is just the adduction of the humerus because otherwise with the our, our body's weight in something uh, like a, a dip bar, our arm wants to go out. So we have to crank it in to keep it adducted. So we get a lot of pec major involvement with that. Okay, so some, some scapular depression, but mostly we're looking at flexion, adduction, medial rotation, okay? For pec minor, all right, now we're moving on to scapular movements. It's going to be a protractor of the scapula, so sliding it forward. It's also going to be involved in depression, so drawing the, the scapula down, and downward rotation, which we can really only do from upward rotation. So if we have upward rotation of the scapula, it will be involved in downward rotation. Okay, so protraction, depression, downward rotation. For serratus anterior, okay, on the upper nine ribs, it is also going to be a protractor, so sliding the scapulas forward, but it is going to be a upward rotator. So it will be involved in the upward rotation, right, the rotating upward of the scapula. If you're still a little confused about that, if I create a scapula here, okay, let's say you're looking at um, the back of a scapula, in fact, uh, I don't have a skeleton in here, but if you're looking at the back of a, um, a right scapula, okay, looking at the back of a right scapula, 
This is the, we'll say this is the acromion process. Let's just do that. This is the acromion process here. And you're looking at the back. This is the posterior side. When the acromion process goes up, it's upward rotation. When the acromion process goes down, it's downward rotation. That's the easiest way to think about it. You can also think about the inferior angle. Here's going to be the spine. The inferior angle is going to move away from the spine in upward rotation. It's going to move towards the spine in downward rotation. Again, if these things need reminders for you, go back and watch the movement video. It, it can be very, very helpful. Okay, Because um, once you get that down, the movement's down, it's easier to apply them to muscles. Okay, So serratus anterior protraction and upward rotation. Subclavius stabilizing the clavicle on the sternum, not anything we can display with motion, but just like with scapular depression, we can feel that clavicle moves inferior. So that would be something that subclavius does. So if you lift your scapulas up and then you drive them down, you'll feel subclavius working. Um, and that leaves us with, so pec major, pec minor, series and subclavius. So that's all four of the shoulder muscles. So that's all we're gonna do for this video. We'll uh, move into neck muscles in the next one. But uh, hopefully this will help you at least see the movements. Um, and then I would recommend you go through them at home and just try the movements out on yourself.